Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now, lots of um, electric car news and renewable energy news this week. Now, the Nissan Leaf is uh, currently, so the latest reports suggest that it has sold somewhere around 25,000 cars worldwide, mostly in America and Japan. There's about a thousand on the road in the UK now that have been sold here. Uh, there's uh, obviously a lot more of them coming very soon. Now, at the moment, this Nissan Leaf is being charged by electricity coming from the national grid. And that means that about 80% of it is produced by burning something. Now, not everything that is burnt uh, to produce that electricity creates CO2. I mean, obviously the oil, natural gas, uh, coal, they do. But a lot of the electricity is coming from nuclear power and that doesn't uh, produce any CO2. It does produce a little bit of waste that takes about 400,000 years to, to get rid of. Uh, you know, let's skip over that. But the rest of it is coming from renewable energy. But of course, in this particular instance, as regular viewers will know, uh, quite a lot of the power that goes into this car comes from the sun. Well, it's not been a terribly sunny day today, but it has produced some. I think I've produced about uh, six kilowatt hours so far. In total, the solar panels have now produced nearly 1,300 kilowatt hours in total. This car has been running on about 75, 80% solar energy uh, for the last three months. Uh, proper grown-up people who did exams at school have done the maths. It has cost me uh, th five pounds per thousand miles to drive it. We've now done seven and a half thousand miles in total in the car, coming up to eight thousand miles, uh, at a cost of, you know, maybe 25 quid to do all those miles. So economically there's no comparison. Once you've got solar panels, which anyone can get if you've got a south-facing roof and you want to get solar panels, Google rent my roof if you're in the UK. You can get solar panels for nothing like I did. I thought I was special. No, I'm not. Anyone can get them. If you've got a south facing roof, they'll put up solar panels for nothing and you benefit from the electricity they produce. And believe me, they produce a lot of electricity, even in this dull grey country. Now, this is the inverter. This uh, inverts the power from DC coming from the solar panels out on the roof up there uh, into AC when it goes into the mains. So that's feeding into the mains and that's the little box that converts it. And you can actually tap it and have a look. There's 236 volts going into the mains at the moment, a total of 1,349 kilowatt hours and uh, 6.35 kilowatt hours from today. So that mounts up to, you know, a fair amount of electricity, really. And considering today, uh, there's been some bright sunny periods, but it hasn't exactly been a sunny day. Anyway, so that is, shows what can be done in this country. Imagine what can be done in a desert. So how do you get the power that you generate in a desert into an area where loads of people live? That is a big problem. It's a big problem that is being worked on with enormous enthusiasm and quite a lot of success. So there's some Japanese scientists looking at uh, superconductors, super cooled, weird cabling things. I don't understand it. They've so far got uh, a two, kilo two kilometer long test cable that shows that you're, you're losing, I think it's like 0.1% uh, of the electricity that you send through. Uh, they're talking about over thousands of miles. Anyway, there's this foundation called Desertec who are working on this problem. And uh, that is their plan is over the next 20 years to uh, produce all the power that Europe needs from the desert in uh, North Africa. They've already started building stuff in Morocco. And they're talking about pr pr producing 470,000 megawatts of power using 0.02% of the Sahara landmass, a tiny amount. Not only that, they're talking about using some of that energy to produce solar panels out of the sand. They'll use the, they'll turn the sand of the Sahara Desert into silicon, which they'll use in photovoltaic panels. What the, the gist of all this is that it could be done. It's not going to be cheap, it's not going to be quick, it's not going to be easy, but it could be done. And this is the real crucial point of my argument. And then you can say, well, it's just too expensive, it's too complicated. How complicated is it to maintain our supply of natural gas and oil? And then there's what's just been launched in Paris, which I think is brilliant. So in London, if you go around London now, those of you who visited will have seen them, there's rows and rows of bikes that you can rent. They're called Boris bikes, which is kind of not quite right because the idea was introduced by the previous mayor Ken Livingston but let's not go on about that. Boris bikes you have a little ta uh, key fob thing you put it on the bike lock and it goes chung and you've got the bike off you go you've got that bike for half an hour pedal to the next location plug it in when you get there you don't have to lock the bike up or worry about the bike it's not your bike you go off and do what you're doing I've used them a lot they're brilliant 
in Paris they've got the same system with bikes, but they've now introduced a system, exactly the same system, but with electric cars. Electric cars have a special place to park, they charge them while they're parked there all the time, so whenever you get in the electric car, it's got a full battery, you drive it around, you put it back when you've finished with it. I love this idea because I think it's you know, we need to take another, another step with our whole connection with cars. Do we actually have to own cars, or should we just have them around for us to use when, it, when we need them. Most cars spend most of their time not being used. And that's perfect for electric cars, because most of the time you're charging it, and then the very short time you need it, you drive it. So I think that's fantastic that Paris have done that. I hope a lot of other cities will follow suit. Uh, I'm now gonna show you a little film that I made, uh, which features an electric car that will be available in Paris. Fantastic little thing called the Mia. Really nice little car with a very unusual position for the driver. Have a look at this. So it's foot on brake and turn, things yes. are happening. Is that right? Is that the That's right it. noises? That's it. And it's got indicators on. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, handbrake there. Wow. So tell me very quickly, Thomas, this is, is it a specific type of Mia? And then do you say Mia or Maya? What do you say? Mia. Mia. Now um, this is a uh, 12 indicating... kilowatt hour uh, Mia. Right. Long wheelbase, four seater. It is, it is such a different experience sitting in the middle of a car, you know, that you're, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that your spatial, it feels like I know where I am, that, that side, I know where that side is, and also I know where that side is. So I should explain to viewers that we're driving around a, the track at the Eco Velocity exhibition by um, Battersea Power Station. But it's, I mean, from the point of view of driving it, it is supremely simple and clear you know, yes. what's going on I and mean, it's very easy. A 12 kilowatt hour that gives you around 75 right. uh, to 80 miles right. um, in the urban cycle. Are we allowed to go around twice? Yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also very suitable for delivery vehicles you know sure. to have it as with no seats in the back presumably and so sure. easy to get in and out of as well which is really handy either side no doors that open slidey doors very mm -hmm. clever. We're doing 21 miles an hour now, I'm sure we're not meant to. Well, that's all I've got time for this week. Uh, car is now charged, so that's it. Until next time, sorry, just closing the cover. Until next time, thanks for watching, if you have been.